Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through on how to get started with the Synology Drive application. I wanna cover some of the features as well as some of the quirks with the application. So guys, let's go ahead and get right to it. The first thing you need to do to get started is to navigate over to the Play Store and search for Synology Drive. From there, you'll be able to download and install the Drive application. After it has finished installing, you'll be able to open it and it's gonna ask for three different things. It's gonna ask for your Quick Connect ID, your account, and your password. So your account and password is gonna be your standard username and password that you use to log into your Synology, whether that's through the web portal or over your local network. Assuming you don't use the domain to access your Synology over the local network. From there, you also need your Quick Connect ID. The Quick Connect ID allows you to access files on your Synology from a, when you're off your local network, and this is very useful because you don't have to deal with annoying network things such as port forwarding and so on. So if you're not the one that set up your Synology, get your Quick Connect ID from your administrator. I also strongly recommend using HTTPS. After logging in, you'll be brought to the main screen of your Synology Drive application. Here you'll see all the different team folders that you have access to that have been enabled on the Synology server itself. From there, let's click on the hamburger icon to get to a couple of different quick access features built into the Drive application. So here you'll see three different features that I wanna highlight. The first of which is shared items. These will be files that other users on your Synology have shared with you uh, using the share option that is built in. I'll go over that a little bit further here in the future, but the shared items allows someone to share a file that might be in a team folder that you might not normally have access to, but because they've shared it, you will now be able to access just that specific file without having to actually be given permission to the whole team folder. From there, I'm gonna cover recent items. This is pretty simple. As the name implies, this is files that you've recently accessed using the Drive application. So if you need to get back to work on a certain document or something along those lines, you can quickly and easily access that through the recent items. The start one is also another useful feature. If you have files that you need to use, maybe not regularly, so they might not always be in your recent files, but they're important and you wanna to get to them quickly, you can star them, and I'll cover that here in a bit, but that allows you to very quickly and easily get to those files and without having to navigate through all the subfolders and exactly find exactly where it is in the team folder. All right, so now we're gonna move on and actually cover accessing files from your team folders. So click on the team folder tab and then navigate to the file that you want to access just as you would on a Windows, Mac, Linux, or so on and so forth desktop. So from there, once you find the file that you want to access, this is where a couple quirks are introduced. The first of which has nothing to do with Synology Drive, but did completely mess up my demonstration. And that is the fact that the mobile version of Word can't open docx files apparently. So that is a slight annoyance, but we will be able to continue this demonstration with the Excel files that I had as test. So here you'll be able to see that there's another quirk that is introduced from the Synology Drive, and that is the fact that files are opened in read-only mode. So if I simply click on a file, such as an Excel file, it will open natively, and I won't have to download it or anything along those lines. It'll just open right into my Excel document. But that's where the quirk is actually involved, and the fact that it is read-only. So depending on the file that you're trying to access, this might be perfectly fine and won't be a hindrance to your workflow. So for example, if you're opening a PDF that you don't need to edit, you just need it for reference material, or if you're opening an image that you want to share with somebody or a video that you want to share with somebody and show them, this isn't going to be a big hindrance. But if it is something that is the document that you need to actually edit, this is a pretty big annoyance because you then have to go to the triple dot menu on the side, click download, download the file, then now get to your downloads folder on your device, open that file, edit the file that you wanted to change, and then go back to the drive application and re-upload it. It could be worse though, because it is pretty smart about re-uploading it doesn't make a duplicate of the file, it simply replaces it, and you'll see that the timestamp will update to the version that you have just updated. So it could be worse, but it is a pretty big annoyance uh, to simply edit a document from your drive application directly. All right, so now that you know how to access and edit files stored on your Synology server using the Drive application, I want to move on to a couple more special features before we wrap up this video. So to access these special features, you're going to use that same triple dot menu that we used to download a file to either star, label, or share a file. So star, and we've kind of already mentioned that earlier, where you can easily access files using that quick access menu. The labeling allows you to organize files uh, based on your use case, 
I don't personally use labeling, but if you are a heavy user of the team, uh, the team folders and the drive application in general, this could definitely be handy, especially if you're like a mobile worker that's constantly working while on the go. So the final thing I want to cover is sharing, and this is actually quite powerful. Uh, there's a different tiers and the default behavior is to create a private link. So the moment you click the share button, it'll create a private link and you'll be able to copy that link to send this to somebody using any application. There's also the share to uh, button, which will open a, a select list of applications where you can send that link to somebody. So this will allow someone to only download a file. They won't be able to edit it in any manner. You do have two additional tiers which you can adjust later on. So you have an internal link or a public link and both of these have the ability to view or edit as two different permission tiers. The big difference between public and internal is for the internal link, someone has to have a Synology account on your Synology server. So if that link does somehow get out in the public, no one will be able to either view or edit it, which is definitely great for more private documents. So with these multiple different tiers, of sharing permissions, it allows you to very finely tune how people will be able to access the file, whether you only want someone on your local network or your local Synology to be able to access those files, or if you want these files to be available via the public internet, as long as that person has the link. So some very cool features of the Synology drive, and hopefully there'll be something there that is useful for you. All right, so that's about all there is involved with accessing your Synology server using the drive application on your Android device. Hopefully the weird quirk of having to download a file to be able to edit and then have them to re-upload that isn't too big of a hindrance for your use case. But if it is, hopefully that's something that, is, that Synology will fix in the future and hopefully it might be something that they're working on. I really don't have any idea, but hopefully there'll be something that will be resolved in the future. So if you liked this video and found it informative, give it a big like, guys. I do greatly appreciate that. And also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, make sure to smash that subscribe button. If you do know someone that might be using the Drive application or possibly thinking about it, please share this video with them and hopefully get the word of the channel out to the wider public. I greatly appreciate all the support that you guys give me. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, Zach out.